All right. So if you have TradingView, you probably have seen the charts, the indicators, and uh, the question you might have is, how do you back test and how do you do it properly? That's something that I was struggling with many years ago when I had uh, TradingView. I was primarily focused on indicators, and then it took me a while to really figure out how the strategies work to get a back test. And what you're seeing right on the screen right now is one of our strategies that we have back tested. This is actually on the QQQ, the ETF going all the way back uh, from the year 2000 to 2000, well, today, May 23rd, 2024. And what you're seeing in front of you is a chart with based off of a strategy. And what we're going to try to do is I'm going to show you how to set this up or basically how to set up a strategy on the preset strategies just so you can get an idea of how to do a, um, a back test. But basically, this is the goal. How do you get a back test like this? First, go up to the screen here, minimize, put the, click, click on this uh, collapse panel, and I'm looking at the 15-minute chart on the QQQ, and I see that our strategy is applied on this right now. Okay. I want to show you how to add a strategy to a chart just so you're familiar of how to actually get a strategy on a chart, and they're different than indicators. So you come up here, you click on indicators, and this tab will bring up this window here where you have favorites, personal, technicals, financial community, and invite only. You want to click on technicals to actually see the, these are the out of the box the indicators and strategies that you're going to have available to you. There's profiles and there's patterns in here. The indicators are what most people were familiar with. Indicators have buy and sell signals. They can have all sorts of different settings for them. But what they can't do is they cannot backtest. In order to backtest, you need to have a strategy. Now, here, if you click on strategies here, these are the strategies that come with TradingView. These are all just pre-built. Now, there's thousands of strategies and thousands of indicators that TradingView users have created. And you can just come up here in that search bar and just start typing any kind of name for a strategy, uh, an indicator, and it will sh start showing you. The difference between indicators, another difference is you'll notice is how do you tell them when you're looking at a name? You'll see on the right-hand side is an arrow down, an arrow up with this line. That means it's a it's strategy. Indicators do not have that line. So you want to have a strategy in order to back test. And let's just take, for example, how do you apply this? You just come down here. You click on the strategy. It applies, for example, that's the MACD. We put that on our chart. And... When I'm going to come up here, you can actually have there's two stuff. So now we have our strategy and the MACD strategy on a chart. I'm just going to click on this eyeball here to hide the strategy so I can hide it. It doesn't show you us or display it anymore. Now we can see the MACD strategy. Now let's just say I would say, what's the, what does the back test look like? And what, over here on this right hand side, you're going to see this deep back testing button. And that deep back testing will go, will allow you to go further back in time. But for now, I just want to show you that. That is how you actually get a strategy on the chart. And out of the box, it will show you, it should show you a, an actual green line showing you the equity line of that strategy. Now, to make adjustments to the settings, that's what I'm going to show you next. Now, instead of showing you the MACD uh, settings, I'm actually going to remove that. And I'm going to show you our strategy and how our strategy settings look because all of these strategies are going to be set up uh, similarly or at least they will have uh, the, the basic structure of how the settings work. So I'm going to minimize this screen right here, collapse the panel. Let's go ahead and click on this gear button right here. And you're going to see these four tabs, the inputs, property, style, and visibility. So visibility and style, I just leave alone. You can uh, adjust the coloring and what you want visible on a chart, and you can adjust what if you want the strategy to be on certain time frames or not. Um, what I think the first thing I usually do is I go into properties here, and then I move to inputs. You can go back and forth, but these are the two important ones. So I'm going to start with properties. I just start with my, my this is because this is the back test, right? This is the back test. What do we want it to start with? I'm going to put it in 100000 just to make it an even number. $100,000, start the back test. I want the base currency to be in U.S. dollars. You have all this, these drop-down options. The order size, I want it to be 100% of the equity. That just means um, whatever my equity position is, I want it to buy it all and sell it all. Buy it all and sell it all. 
And if I had a strategy where I just wanted to have 10% of the balance, I can do that. You know, I, I can have the back test, and that'll, the back test results would just be using $10,000 per order. And if I said, well, what if I just wanted, what if I wanted a pyramid and I could put 10 in here? Say I would have a, a let's just say I had a strategy that had t the, possible, the possibility to have up to 10 buys before I sell. So I'd buy 10,000 and then another, like basically dollar cost averaging, you could do that, for example, on a strategy where you buy 10 times and then you sell. Buy 10 times and you sell. But that means you want to have your order size be, uh, be correct so that you can, um, I mean, this has to be appropriate. So we would do 10 orders, 10%, and I can do it that way. Instead, I'm going to do 100% of equity. And you also have the option to do U.S. dollars, which or contracts for your order size. And contracts would be for like futures, and then U.S. dollars would be just another fixed uh, way to do it, but it just could be that as well. I like to use percentage of equity. The next uh, place that I want you to look at is commissions and slippage. Now, I use the commission field to account for slippage. Um, I put everything in the commission because I want to see what that total cost is in the performance uh, statistics, which, we'll, we, which we will look at a little bit later. But the so every stock, every option, or you know, everything has slippage. Slippage is the difference between when you try to execute. So if you put it in a market order and for in one second, the following second, that's, there could be slippage where the price is a little bit worse. So what I do is I, I try to account for that inside of this commission cost. Now, right now I have 0.01 of a percent as the commission cost. Now, m most brokers don't charge any commission, but the reason why I put one zero point zero one and how I calculate that is you will want to be, whenever whatever stock you're actually gonna be trading or ETF, you wanna make sure you understand what are the spreads between bid and ask, okay? Because, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that spread between the bid and ask, and then we're, then we're gonna double that because we want to, we're gonna double that to account for slippage. So what I do here is I take four, I take, well, QQQ is usually a two cent um, spread, all right? And that the, the difference between bid and ask is usually about two cents, pretty conservatively. Sometimes it's one cent. But if it's two cents, I take two cents and I divide it by 450, and I get 0 0.004 of a percent. Okay, so 0 0.004, like this. If I... And then now I could leave it there and that would account for my spread, but I double it, you know, so it should be 0 0.8, 0 0.008. And that would be accounting for my, my slippage because I'm just going to say the spread between bid and ask is probably going to be what I can expect for slippage, but I'm going to actually be a little more conservative and just point point zero one, And that's, that'll account for that. I use the rest, the margins. I keep that blank. I keep everything else blank. Um, but you can look further into this, like this bar, you know, you can have the order fill at the bar, bar close, but your results will probably not be accurate. Um, and the reason why I say it won't be accurate is they'll probably be too optimistic to think that you're going to get the, the price at the bar close because most strategies trigger after the bar closes. So you're really getting the price on the following bar. That's the only thing I would say about that. Um, so then we go to the inputs tab. Uh, we have inputs, very important tab here. You have trigger settings, and every strategy is going to have different cells, uh, fields to put in. Uh, you, you know, for for our strategy, we have these three settings here and this one right up here, and then we have the ability to go long or short or both, which is all. We this is a long. We only go long. We've only found success going long because this is a swing trading strategy. Um, so we keep it long. You can do a start time and end time. So I just keep that really early and, and really, uh, you know, I put that 2,099 just to keep that window of time for the back test to go as far back and far forward as possible. We can do take profit and stop losses. We can uncheck it. We can check it. And I have my, my settings in there like this. And I scroll down. These are the alert messaging boxes for the JSON code. This is used for automated trading, which we do. We put our JSON code in here, and then it triggers through a webhook to our 
a third party company that well it's, it's not our company it's a, there is a third party company that we send it to and then they send it to our broker the order and it all happens within about 2 seconds put in the json code there and you're basically all set but for, to do the back test you don't need to fill in uh you know this kind of json you can just leave all that blank you click okay and then then you're ready now it's time to actually maximize the screen maximize the panel here and i'm going to click on deep back testing this is going back all the way to the year 2000 and what you're seeing is a on the qqq is 1293 percent total return the profit factor is 1.37 what that means is if you click on here on this little information button here the amount of money the strategy made for every unit of money it lost okay so it's that's 1.3 all right so that's the factor then you have max drawdown this is one of the most important things it's for me it, there's there's three things it's the net profit how much is that a strategy profit um what is the max drawdown Okay, I want to know that because the max draw uh, is very, very important. And what does the equity curve look like? And what you're looking at right here is an, we call that an equity curve. And it's so important that it's smooth. The smoother it is, the less drawdown it's going to have. And that's why back testing is so important. You can have these great indicators that maybe look, may look like they're really profitable for, let's just say, weeks or months or maybe even a year. But if you don't know how to actually back test or actually see what the results of the actual strategy have been during different market cycles and weather conditions, it's going to be a big shock because it, what will happen is these, these strategies are inevitably going to be challenged by new future conditions. And so what we want to do is, does a strategy go through the different storms, the different weather, and handle it without a big drawdown? And does it handle it uh, well with a good return? Okay, now I'm going to go to right here on the bottom. You're going to see a buy and hold equity. I'm going to click that. What that is telling you or showing you in the blue line, if you took $100,000 in the year 2000 and bought $100,000 worth of QQQQ, this is what the return would, would have looked like. The performance, the equity curve is in blue of the buy and hold. Okay, so that's, a, uh, that's about 500%. Uh, in the last 24, year, 24 years. But our strategy, um, based off of what you're seeing here, is 1,293. Again, and it has a dr maximum drawdown of 14%. And for, for those of you do, who really are not too familiar with drawdown, let me just dive in a little bit deeper here. Okay. So I'm going to actually, you can see the buy and hold in blue here. I'm going to turn that off. I love seeing the buy and, blue, or the, the, the buy and hold because it, it it's really important to see how it compares. I mean, it, because if the buy and hold is better um, and it's smoother, of course, just buy and hold. But the, usually that's not the case with equities. Usually these equities are going to have huge drawdowns, and that's what you're going to be looking for. Because the NASDAQ, the, the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, has had an 85% drawdown in the, in the dot-com crash of the year 2002. The um, Great Recession was about 55%. And then COVID was 35 or so. Um, anyway, what you're looking for is what's that drawdown is from the peak, the highest peak to the next following lowest valley. Highest peak to the lowest valley. Okay. And what it's saying is the highest from the highest peak to the lowest following valley is 12%. Okay. And that's in this period. That what, on the chart here, it says 12%. That's in this testing period. If I click on deep back testing, that's the whole period. Okay, that that back. I think that drawdown occurred sometime back in the Great Recession. But what's important is is it, it's the peak, the your your highest peak to the following lowest valley, and and that will sh uh, show you the important. It basically show you how effective that strategy is at. at, at preventing loss because conservation of your capital is absolutely important but the back testing here is what we do to actually really determine if we're in a safe investment uh, strategy okay something that's important i'm going to move right here to the performance summary a lot of people um 
don't look too far into the details here, but it says the net profit of all your trades by um, long and short. So, so, for example, on our strategy, we do not go short. Right now, we've, we've been we're, a, we're biased long just because the markets are always biased long in the long range. I mean, we, we you know this is a swing trading strategy. So, what you'll if, it, if we had shorts, it would show you the, the net trading profit of the shorts. It will show you the max drawdown the versus the buy and hold. Um, like that buy and hold had 483%. It will show you the sharp ratio. It will show you commissions. Okay, so um, for example, if you had $100,000 starting balance like we did in our back tests, and it grew to one point, almost $1.3 it, you had to pay about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, not in commissions, but really we're, we're counting. That's accounting for the spreads, right? The spreads of the bid ask and the slippage. Okay, and that's um, that's where. So so that, so basically, we're trying to sandbag. We're really trying to be conservative, and that's the cost. So what you see is you have the gross profit of all your gains, and the gross loss of your of your losses, and then they, and then you subtract the commissions from there. Another good thing to see here is, as you scroll down, is it tells you the average trade right here is 0.14% gain. That's the average trade, okay? And average winning trade is 1.53%. The average losing trade is one or is 0.47. So our wins are double the losses. That's good to know. It's 2.14% is that ratio right here when and another thing i like to look at is the average i don't look at the i'm sorry the the the, the average bars in a trade 36 bars so we would take it you would take we, we we're trading this one on a 15 minutes so you take 15 minutes times 36 and that would tell you how many how many minutes really your your trades are active for but you'll notice the trades the the winning trades are are longer the 63 bars is the average and 19 bars is the um, average loss. So usually the losses, there's more losses, but they're quicker. They get out, and then the, uh, the breakout strategy, really what this is, is it'll ride longer. Okay, and that's, that's what we'll, you'll see in this performance. The list of trades is important because you do, it's nice to see what this thing's doing. Um, when you're looking at a list of trades, it gives you all the history of it, and um, you can download Export data. I do that a lot. You know, I'll do export data to Excel. You know, work on that that data. So I use that feature a lot. And then remember that properties right here will give you that date range. It'll actually give you the strategy inputs. Just just it's just showing you what they are. Uh, that's good. This little gear up here actually lets you change your properties and your inputs. Um, but you can spend a lot of time on these back tests and that's what uh, that's what the key is is to really analyze and to dive deep into the performance summary the list of trades the and and really analyze visually the equity curve making sure you have something that looks great and you're comparing it to your buy and hold and the last thing i'm going to show you here is the drawdowns this little chart down here the if you click this, it does show you drawdowns. A lot of people are like, "What in the world is this?" Right? All this, pur all these purple. What that is is, let's get rid of the noise. What you can do is you can turn off the equity, and turn off the buy and hold, and what this is showing you is if you this strategy has had a maximum fourteen point six eight percent drawdown, and these are the periods of time through since two, the year two thousand last twenty four years. This is the drawdown it has, and you can kind of see the average drawdown over here to the right. This is the ledger. This is in percentages. So you could say 4% is pretty normal, you know, to have 4% drawdown from your peaks. Um, but it doesn't have more than 14. Um, but again, that's showing you how to really look at your drawdowns. You can isolate them. You can, and then again, you can add them to the chart so you can see when they have occurred. And if you are interested in test driving this for 30 days, be sure to look in the description. Uh, for the details there, be sure to comment if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Take care, everybody.